Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, a trip that we made to Canada, specifically about the R1T in Canada. So as some of you may or may not know, uh, the R1T or Rivian is not available in Canada yet. This is as of July 2022. Uh, latest that I've heard that I've read through uh, Inside EVs is that uh, Rivian will be available sometime in November, fingers crossed. But for the time being, it is not available. So when you make the trips to Canada, there's some things that you might want to know ahead of time. Um, so. In this video, I'm going to do uh, a few things. I'm going to compare some of the traveling that we did in the R1T to um, my Tesla Model 3. We've done the same trip before in the Tesla Model 3, so I'll have some type of comparison to be able to help um, uh, guide you down that, that uh, road, just to give you a little bit of information on, on how the two vehicles uh, uh, compare. Um, Charging tips while traveling, especially in Canada, uh, you can't rely on certain apps. So I'll give you a little bit of information. The first thing you wanted to do, what you want to do, is download Electrify Canada. Electrify America does not work in in Canada. So you'll notice on the Electrify America map of chargers that everything stops at the border. So you have to download uh, a separate app called Electrify Canada before going into Canada. Um, and so that's why it's very important to download the Electrify Canada app. Things to be aware of when you're uh, making a trip to Canada. Um, in my case, my truck was reg is, is registered in uh, Illinois because I just got it a little over a month ago. So um, it still has the temporary plates on it. I have not received the registration, um, the plate registration for Washington State yet. So um, I have the temporary tags on. When you when you cross the border, uh, that's one of the first things that the border guards ask you is um, the plate registration. So make sure you bring the, the truck registration with you uh, to show that it's registered in your name. They'll check the serial number and things like that. Uh, just have the, all that paperwork uh, available to you. I brought the electronic format that seemed to work perfectly fine for them. So um, no big issue, but I, I did have it on hand, which was uh, um, very lucky on my part. Um, helpful hints when staying. Uh, across the border. Uh, find a hotel that has uh, either a Tesla destination charger or uh, a J1772 charger. Uh, that's, that will really help with the optimization of your, your mileage because when you stay over then you can plug it in at night just like you do at home, wake up the next morning, everything's fully charged. So uh, make sure you, you look for hotels or accommodations where you have um, charging overnight. And one of the biggest factors that you'll want to know about is the limitations for the software in the R1T. So right now, um, I'll, I'll take a look at the version of software that I'm, I've got because I know it just updated. Um, but the version of software that's currently installed in the R1T does not have any translation to kilometers. Um, there's no way to convert your screen from miles to kilometers. In my Tesla, the Model 3, you can easily select whether or not you want to show metric or US um, miles per hour or, or kilometers. Uh, uh, so just be aware that there's nowhere to find that on the, um, on the screen in the R1T as of this uh, taping. So, um, and the last thing I just wanted to cover is just charging costs. So um, I'll do a little bit of a comparison with charging costs and a, a gasoline vehicle charging costs uh, versus um, in the R1T, just total costs. Hey everyone, just wanted to remind you, if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the video. It helps with the metrics and the analytics for YouTube and it will help with the uh, providing content, future content for this channel. So, just to give you a little bit of a backstory, we got the R1T on June 16th, and the day after, um, I took it in for the PPF. And um, it took um, almost two weeks to have the PPF completed and installed. And I am very happy with the PPF, putting the PPF. It was probably one of the better decisions that I made. I did get the ceramic coating, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Um, but 
the PPF is, is definitely where you want to um, invest a little bit of money going forward. And I know Rivian just announced the fact that they have um, partnership with Expel in order to, to uh, have the PPF installed for you. Um, and that's a great partnership. Costs roughly half of what I paid for uh, the PPF at a local uh, installer here in the Seattle area. So approximately three weeks after having the R1T, we decided to take a trip to Kelowna. And it, this happened to be the July 4th weekend. So July 4th was a Monday. Uh, July 1st was the Friday. So those who don't know, July 1st is Canada Day, um, which, is, which celebrates Canada, um, Canada's independence from Great Britain. So um, there was, it, it was a double-ended uh, holiday, extra long holiday, which was great. So we, uh, we, decided to, to, we decided to leave Saturday afternoon and stopped in a little town north of Seattle, uh, northeast of Seattle called Leavenworth. And um, Leavenworth is a small town. For those of you who, who've never been there, it's a small town uh, that's been converted into a German style town. So it, when you're walking, walking through or driving through Leavenworth, you'll notice all the buildings, all the signage is all styled towards a German, uh, a small German town. Uh, really interesting place to visit, but anyways, uh, we stopped on Leavenworth just to pick up a couple of uh, subs, um, and we ate the subs, and as we ate the subs, we plugged into a, uh, a DC uh, fast charger. Um, it was an Electrify America charger. Uh, I think it was at a, a Safeway, if I recall correctly, Safeway or Albertson's uh, parking lot. And um, we put in about 25 kilowatts over the 15, 20 minutes that we were there. And then we uh, continued on our trip to uh, the border. Uh, so we went up Highway 97, and Highway 97 crosses the border at a town called Asuyas in, in British Columbia. Um, so we drove up through Highway 97, and for those of you who have never made that trip, it's a really scenic trip. Um, all up through Chelan, Wenatchee, Chelan, uh, all up um, in the valley. Uh, so it's a really pretty trip. So if you can make it, I suggest maybe doing it in the daylight so you can see some of the, the scenery um, around there. But anyways, once you get up to Osoyas, you'll cross the border. And uh, we happened to meet uh, a border guard at the Canadian border who asked us, um, He'd never seen a, a Rivian before, so he made the comment and he asked whether or not we were from the future. And um, he thought the, the Rivian looked so futuristic that uh, um, he, he had to take a few minutes just to check it out, to, just to see how, um, how it compared to, uh, to other vehicles. And that's when I started pulling out all of the, the paperwork when he was asking me about the ownership and things like that. So um, he asked me um, a bunch of questions um, and we continued on into Canada uh, to to our hotel room in Osoyoos. Um, so as soon as we crossed into Canada, um, we noticed uh, an error on the screen. And the only way that I could describe the error is that it would appear that the network, so I think that um, Rivian uses AT&T in the US, and I don't know who AT&T partners with in Canada, um, but I think the error that we were getting was just the transition from the U.S. network into the Canadian network. And um, that was pretty significant, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why just here in a moment. But um, the, the, the error allowed us to continue to use the uh, navigation, but everything seemed to be a little bit slower. Uh, understandably, they haven't opened up um, the network in Canada yet, so uh, things weren't working as, as nice as they, they were in the States. So, okay, trying to use the hotspot and trying to enable it, and it just disables itself. Enable, disable. Um, Anyways, we continued on after we got that error. We continued on to our hotel. Um, once we got to the hotel in uh, in Osoyoos, it happened to be a Holiday Inn. Um, there was a, a Clipper Creek charger which had a, a Tesla plugged into it, and then there was a, a Tesla destination charger which uh, nothing was plugged into. So I brought my my handy Electron um, adapter and. Uh, 
I used the Tesla destination charger and plugged it into uh, the Rivian and let it uh, charge overnight. So worked really well. Woke up the next day fully charged on, and we were ready to get back out on the road again. Um, so the, the one thing that, that was really nice about having the destination chargers, that, uh, which I mentioned uh, earlier, is the fact that the hotels, when they have these destination chargers or some of these, uh, uh, like the Clipper Creek uh, J1772 chargers, a lot of times the hotels don't charge you any fee, just as long as you're staying at the hotel, it's, it's a free charge. So in this case, we were probably, we probably topped up at about 70 kilowatts. Um, so it, that would have been roughly seven dollars uh, in Washington State, anyways, to to top up. So um, that that was kind of a nice to have when we uh, when we stop over. Um, the next morning, we uh, we noticed there was quite a few videos on on uh, the gear guard, and uh, we uh, we got a kick out of watching some of the people walk around with the truck. Um, they'd never seen one uh, before, so they they it was probably a good 20 minutes of videos just people checking out the truck and um, walking around it and so on um, but before we started out from Osoyoos to Kelowna the next day that's when we we tried to we went through the menu system and we tried to uh, find the change changeover of the screen from metric or sorry from from US to uh, metric and there is no place in the screen that we could find uh, that to, to change over. Um, happened to be when, once I actually got back from my trip, I, I uh, reached out to my guide and he confirmed that uh, currently there is no uh, function that converts it from US to metric. So uh, be forewarned, as you're going into Canada, you'll have to continue on in, um, in US um, mileage and, and then convert do the conversions yourself so 100 kilometers is roughly 62 miles an hour 62 miles and change and so on uh, so just be be forewarned that you're going to have to go through some of those conversions so as we were driving down to Kelowna um, we noticed that the posted speed limits uh, were all in kilometers obviously yeah change to 80 and then it'll do the conversion and after a few moments, it'll realize it's 50. No, maybe not. Maybe it'll just stay 80 the whole time. There we go, back down to 50. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little delayed. But every time the, uh, every time the speed limit changes or is posted, takes a while to adjust. That worked roughly 60% of the time. The other, the other 40%, it did not work at all. It just remained 100. Or when the speedometer or when the, the, the speed limit was beyond 100, 100 miles an hour, like there was a, a section of highway between Kelowna and Vancouver where the speed limit, the posted speed limit is 120 kilometers. And uh, for situations like that, it did not change. It just said 120, or sorry, pardon me. It just stuck at 100 uh, um, on the screen. It didn't change to 120, it didn't change to uh, 70 miles an hour, which is roughly 120. Um, so it, it just stuck there. Um, so just be forewarned that that little indicator on your uh, dash in front of the driver um, is wrong 60%, pardon me, wrong 40% of the time. Getting back to the trip from Osoyoos to Kelowna, we booked in at the Best Western in Kelowna. And there's two Best Westerns, one in West Kelowna and one in uh, uh, Kelowna Central. So this is the Best Western Plus in, uh, in Kelowna. Um, they advertised um, charge point chargers, so level two chargers, uh, which is great, um, but they were only 6.6 .6 kilowatts. And uh, so that's about half of the speed that this that the r1t will, will take so it will take twice as long to charge the r1t at 6.6 .6 kilowatts than it does uh, something like a tested tesla destination charger which usually are around um, at least nine kilowatts um, or it could be upwards to 
at the max, which is 11 and a half kilowatts. So just be forewarned that um, not all level two chargers charge at the same rate. And when you get into Canada, the chargers, uh, or at least in the British Columbia area where we, where we were, the rates seem to apply by time. So it's the amount of time that you spend at the charger. It's not the kilowatts. Uh, so just be forewarned that um, it's it's like 50 cents or two dollars uh, an hour or something like that. So just be aware when you pull up to the charger um, what the cost of those chargers because uh, they can get uh, quite pricey if if um, if it's a slow charger and you're charged by the hour. So that that charge point charger at the Best Western we decided actually not to use uh, after all. Um, I charged for, for roughly an hour and. Um, decided that it wasn't worth it so I unplugged it and the next morning when we woke up there was a level 3 charger across the street um, at, in the Canadian Tire parking lot so um, it was an Electrify Canada charger they had a 350 and three one, 150s and I think there might have been a 50 there for the Chatamo as well uh, kilowatt chargers so they had a, a variety of, of chargers and uh, so the next morning I plugged in um, went to grab a, a quick bite to uh, a quick bite for breakfast and got back and I see this Audi GT and I see this uh, uh, Kona, uh, um, pardon me, Kia Nero uh, parked in the stalls beside me. So it was interesting to see the Audi GT. I've never seen one uh, up close and it was his first time at the, uh, at the Charger as well. So a uh, nice looking car. As I was pulling out, I I passed by uh, an Audi e-tron and the guy waved me down and asked me all about uh, the truck so I, I stopped and um, answered a bunch of questions for him and uh, I guess he was expecting his truck sometime the end of next year so uh, he had put it in an order as well. So anyways, after going back to the chargers at the Canadian Tire, um, we filled up to 91% state of charge which cost uh, roughly $25 Canadian uh, so it didn't take too long. Uh, to, to charge up, but that that uh, that was a total of 52 kilowatts for $25 and 65 cents Canadian. So um, that uh, seemed reasonable, um, given the fact that I was I then convert that from Canadian into US and get somewhere around $20 probably US. So this is where we we left Kelowna to go to Vancouver and meet up with some friends for dinner. So as we uh, as we left. Uh, Kelowna, we took the Coquihalli Highway, um, and this is where the the, uh, uh, the posted rates were in excess of uh, 100 kilometers. So they ranged from 100 to 120, um, and there were some areas where it was actually uh, down to about 80 kilometers, I think, because of the construction. So um, be forewarned that uh, that the the mileage or the speed limit varies throughout uh, the Coquihalli uh, Highway, and um, when you're on the Coca Holly, um, you get two different type of speed limit postings. You get the normal white sign that on the side of the road that, that uh, everybody's uh, familiar with, but then you get other electronic uh, signs that are above um, the lane, posted above the lane, above the vehicle, so you would drive underneath them. So um, the Rivian did not pick up those electronic signs at all, uh, which is relatively understandable. Um, we didn't really worry too much about that. Uh, we, we, knew, um, we, we knew what the speed limit was, so we just kept on, um, kept on driving at the, the limit and uh, just watching it and doing the manual conversions ourselves. Um, so got finished the, the Coquihalli Highway and pulled into a, another Canadian tire at Abbotsford, in Abbotsford, uh, British Columbia and just topped up there for a few minutes. We were, um, as I said, we were going out to dinner with some, some friends and um, then we were picking up our, our son at the, uh, the airport in Vancouver and driving back to Seattle. So um, we just wanted to make sure that we had enough charge to um, get to the airport, pick our son up and get back uh, across the border. Not to bore you with a whole bunch of uh, other details, but we uh, basically picked up our son, drove across the border and uh, made it home. Uh, the total round trip was 800 miles and um, we've made similar trips in the Tesla before um, from, from a comparison between the Tesla and the, the Rivian. I mean the Rivian's got the air suspension so it's much more comfortable. It's uh, bigger inside 
Um, you're not as low to the ground you, you, when, you're, when you're high in a truck, you can see further down the road. So I much prefer driving the, uh, the Rivian uh, on those long trips than, than I do the Tesla Model 3 uh, at this point. So the one thing I did notice between the trips that we've made in the Tesla and the Rivian is, I'm sure this has everything to do with the aerodynamics of the, the Tesla Model 3 is much more aerodynamic than the Rivian. We picked up a lot of bugs. Uh, there's a lot, this is why I'm so glad that I did the PPF beforehand because the front of the Rivian was just coated with bugs and there was a lot of bugs on the windshield as well. Um, I don't recall that many bugs on the windshield of the Tesla when we, we've driven the Tesla before. Obviously I can't do a direct comparison because um, I didn't have somebody behind me driving the Tesla at the same time, but um, it's when we're driving the Tesla we don't seem to pick up an awful lot of bugs. I think. As I mentioned, the aerodynamics just pushes a lot of the uh, the bugs and things over top of the windshield, and uh, they never actually ended up hitting the windshield. So, the other thing I wanted to mention is the Tesla Route Planner. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a good effort at, at the Route Planner. I anticipate the Route Planner getting better and better over time, but make sure you, when you're going to Canada, make sure you um, um, don't rely on the Route Planner, first of all. Um, You've got, download a couple of apps. PlugShare is a, is a good app, but don't utilize any one app. So you look at the Rivian, um, um, you look at the Rivian navigation, PlugShare, and then Electrify Canada. Um, and between those three, you should be able to find a, a charger without any, any issues. There are lots of level three chargers in Canada that just might not show up on PlugShare or on the Rivian uh, app. So that's why you have uh, Electrify Canada, which is uh, probably one of the larger networks uh, in Canada as well. Electrify Canada and Electrify America, they're really the same company. They're, they're both um, created out of the, um, the VW Diesel, Dieselgate uh, dilemma a few years ago. Um, why they decided to do a separate app in, uh, in Canada baffles me. Um, every other app, uh, Tesla, ChargePoint, share um, plug share they all use a single app and they'll just do the conversion for you in in the app in, in us dollars uh, or canadian dollars wherever you are the problem with electrify america and electrify canada having two separate apps is i'm a subscriber i'm a premium subscriber in electrify america i don't get that when i go to electrify canada unless i want to pay another i think it's five dollars four or five dollars a month for electrify canada which is ridiculous so if Electrify Canada and Electrify America are listening, please unify the apps. It's ridiculous that you would, uh, you're the only company that I'm aware of that has two separate apps depending on the country that you're in. And given technology, that is not needed. Um, so if you need somebody to help you write an application, by all means, reach out. More than, more than happy to help. The total cost of my uh, charging in, uh, in Canada was $55.25 uh, Canadian. That's that took me over the 800 mile trip, the whole 800 mile trip. So if you equate that into gas, um, I equated that to about $275 uh, uh, for the, the trip. That's at roughly $5 a, a gallon uh, and 15 uh, miles per gallon. Um, what else can I say? Oh, um, minor note. If you are driving a gas vehicle in Canada, um, I did not take in the $275 that, that I just stated, did not take into account the fact that um, in Canada, the equivalent of a US gallon rough, runs roughly $8 Canadian, so or about $6.20 American. I did not take that into account for my calculations. So um, if you do have to fill up in Canada, Gas is a little bit more expensive, so um, the $275 is extremely conservative. You're probably going to end up paying more. Um, and that's it. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. And if it was, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, always like to hear, get some feedback, put some feedback in the comments. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.